And it's a question about kind of what land developers think about, about spatial information. Uh, and this is an interesting question in a sense because uh, kind of everybody who has been kind of talking with the land developers and, and, and had some kind of a contact with contract archaeology either directly or indirectly know something about that kind of what they think. But it hasn't been kind of really researched that much and kind of what kinds of different ideas they might have. So there isn't kind of that much discussion about that. Uh, this is a part of a project I'm, uh, I have been involved in in Sweden uh, about archaeological information in the digital society by large. Uh, I'm not an archaeologist, I'm an information scientist, even if I've been kind of working with and, and in archaeology quite a long time. So I kind of know something, but I'm, I'm kind of desperately trying to be a little bit outsider to kind of be as a kind of a reliable a researcher who can kind of say something kind of a little bit from a distance about archaeology. I'm really bad at that, but, but still, I try. Uh, then it's also a kind of somehow affiliated to to a newish course action about archaeological practices and uh, knowledge work in the digital environment. And uh, kind of even if land developers aren't really kind of archaeologists or, or they are kind of not archaeologists at all, but they are still uh, quite close and they are involved in, in uh, archaeological knowledge work. That's kind of knowledge work that's related to archaeology. And they certainly have a stake on on what archaeologists are doing and what archaeologists are, are discovering. But what I did, this sounds like a rather small sample, uh, I did post uh, the survey to a, a bunch of, of land developers who had been registered in, in Finland and Sweden uh, in, uh, for a few years ago, uh, during two years. Uh, and contacting the people wasn't kind of exactly very easy. Uh, but there is some uh, anecdotal and, and some kind of uh, other evidence from the uh, national uh, heritage authorities from the two countries that these results that are kind of there is a little bit more substance than in a kind of a standard survey that did you like uh, kind of how the, uh, contract archaeological, the contract archaeological process went and, and so on. So here is a little bit more kind of like uh, they could express what they really thought about the process. So even if it's, if it's not a kind of a huge sample, so it's still still kind of rather useful to, to say something about what what land developers think. Uh, the survey wasn't uh, only about spatial information, but it was, it was about archaeological information in general, uh, about what archaeologists do, what kind of land developers think about archaeology and, and so on. But now here in this presentation, I'm going to focus on, on the spatial information aspects. And uh, just to give a little bit of background, so uh, kind of over half of the people uh, or, 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 or the organizations that participated in the survey, so they were somehow municipal, uh, either municipalities, planning departments, but also municipal uh, companies, um, public utilities and so on. And more generally, the, there's a rather good spread of different branches. Okay, some of them represented by only only one um, organization, but still, you could get a, some sort of an idea about at least priorities from one actor in, in these these contexts. And um, there has been some prior work on uh, on on what kind of uh, information is coming from uh, from archaeological excavations and and what types of of things people might be interested in there. There was a study in Flanders published for, uh, yeah, a year ago, not a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, the authors did kind of a categorization that the, you can say that there is kind of administrative information, there is sp spatial information, and there is scientific information coming from the field work. And there were different groups of, of people who were interested in, in these different types of information, so to say. And there's, of course, spatial information, and that's in, uh, interesting for us here, here in this room. And uh, the kind of the general thing from the earlier studies, there are also some other, uh, uh, other reports written on the topic where some sort of remarks on information were produced by archaeologists is mentioned. And the general consensus also from the earlier literature and, and from this study is that kind of GIS data is kind of somehow it's, it's important. 
but the the question is of course kind of how it's important and and what is important in GIS data and what to, what land developers they really kind of want and uh, there was kind of a, a, I could kind of looking at at the responses and and the data so there is there were kind of some trends and some ideas that m uh, several of the uh, of the respondents were expressing and and it, it was possible to compile some sort of a, of a of a wish list so to say and uh, the concern was rather unsurprisingly that they would kind of like to have a very streamlined process where kind of something would happen and then they suddenly would have the boundaries of of all different things that are beyond their reach they should be kind of things that should be preserved so that they, they would appear on their maps and they can kind of just plan everything so that nothing is going to happen on those areas or that they could at least minimize uh, their interventions on the areas that uh, that should be should have some sort of an archaeological interest. Uh, they would like to have detailed information uh, the, what what the detail was, so it seemed to be a little bit kind of a question of, of negotiation. Uh, detailed enough, but not too detailed. Detailed <laughs> for their purposes, uh, not detailed from an archaeological perspective. Uh, then a common thing that was repeated by, by several respondents was that the data should be as exact as possible, and it should be as reliable as possible. And uh, that's they are pretty obvious things, but but then the question is that what is actually meant by these things? And uh, there was re probably I, I would kind of my reading of the results or, or the kind of the, the statements was that the reliability was probably even more important than exactness uh, in a certain sense. So that if you if there was a kind of if you get a map you get a certain coordinates of an area that should be excluded from different types of land development so the thing was that uh, that it should be reliable that that it's it's actually kind of there uh, exactness in a sense that if the kind of the the borders marked on the map should be kind of exactly the borders of the site uh, okay on one hand it was said that it, it's kind of good if they are kind of really, really exact so we can kind of use the land as as kind of uh, much as possible so that we don't have to kind of exclude larger areas but then on the other hand the exactness kind of going a little bit outside uh, of the real site <coughs> would be much better uh, to avoid uh, the possibility that when things have been planned there are kind of how, how things would be constructed and so on, and then the construction work has begun. So then suddenly something emerges. With, okay, no, no, we can't continue. We have to plan again. We have to uh, do something. We have to yeah stop working and and to plan the whole thing again and and, and do the work again. Uh, so in that sense, exactness kind of it doesn't have to be too exact necessarily if it's reliable in a sense that, that we can kind of exclude the possibility of, of ruining the whole project. And then of course they were kind of demanding directly usable file formats and it was kind of the what is a directly usable file format so it's it's the file format I'm using on the software on my computer <laughs> and that gets a little bit tricky. <laughs> um, of course kind of as a, some sort of an standardization would be would be good uh, on both ends but yeah this is what people want but it's it's not really uh, so, uh, some sort of a kind of an uh, how the things could be solved really then when there was a discussion or, or they were kind of uh, asked about the problems relating to to spatial information at the moment uh, the people were complaining about bad or uneven quality of, of CAD drawings or map drawings, both of them really, and it appeared so that in some cases, yeah, the problem was really that that not all the contractors were de uh, delivering very optimal quality drawings, and there should be kind of more more kind of 
standardization and from their perspective they would be happy if there would be kind of a, some sort of discussion about what's what's enough and what's what's kind of what's their perspective on the things there were problems uh, uh, to, to access GIS data especially in Finland people were very un unhappy uh, mostly because data was it was it could be found in many different places and there was kind of no central repository for the data that they could reliably say that the data would probably be there lack of direct access to access to spatial data was a problem uh, it was a little bit kind of an expressed in a way that kind of I'm sitting by my computer and I would like to press a button and get the data on my computer uh, so it was more like this kind of a thing but uh, if there would be a central repository where you could directly download data it would probably make and developers very happy and then uh, related to the access to a general problem of, of that the GIS data might have been might not have been accessible at all so the thing was that uh, there was were problems that you have to contact very many different kinds of public authorities to to check and double check that whether all the data were actually the one that the land developer got uh, in the first place then there was an, another uh, thing that's kind of partly related to uh, uh, to the um, spatial information and it's the question about about interest and non-interest and it's kind of generally uh, known that uh, in most cases uh, land developers aren't really that interested in in archaeology or spatial archaeological spatial information or archaeological aspects of spatial information and that was kind of really clear from the survey and it was also really I would say that it's it's also indicative indicative that I didn't get too many responses, so most of the people didn't care less to 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 kind of take part in my survey, especially because I couldn't kind of uh, punish them for not 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 doing that uh, as probably some sort of a public authority could be doing at least indirectly. But there were people were also interested, and there was kind of a, there was a clear indication of the possibility to have some sort of a dialogue and to kind of uh, that they were really kind of interested also in archaeology and to kind of uh, not really commercially but somehow inspirationally and and somehow kind of culturally to exploit the presence of an archaeological site by the by the thing that they were developing so there is kind of this is a something that uh, to identify these kinds of land developers and, and start a dialogue with them and, and try to discuss what they would like to get out of the archaeological work so it, it would be probably a very good idea. Um, then um, a, a kind of a final, uh, it's not really an yeah, opportunity of threat. Yeah, probably precisely that, or opportunity or threat. Uh, but it's probably a threat and there's an opportunity in the threat. Uh, and it, it's a question about social context as a central information source. And it's, of course, kind of that... Uh, they were complaining that you need to kind of know the right people to get the spatial information you need and to get check the quality and, and check all, all kinds of things. But then on the other hand, kind of if social contacts are really that important, so it kind of forces land developers to actually contact archaeologists and to kind of discuss with each other, which might actually create some kind of a common understanding of things. Uh, now, you're probably kind of dead bored about, about this talk about land developers. But if you would like to read more about it, so there's an article uh, probably coming out tomorrow or kind of on Monday. I just have had the final proof uh, in my email today. So you might take a look at it. It's going to be open access. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you.